Music. I'm Kathy Coslett, and we are here in the studios of the Culinary Arts Institute at Luzerne County Community College in Nanticoke, Pennsylvania. Joining me is Chef Dave Simonelli, Jr. from Arant's Restaurant in Duryea. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. So tell us about the name, first of all, and then let's move on to some of the interesting ingredients and food you have there at Arant's. Well, the name uh, Arant's derives from the word restaurant, okay. and if you take off the rest comes our slogan, a separation from the rest. Oh, that's so pretty just neat. Just people to know we're a little different and stuff and use the word restaurant in the name. That's and, pretty uh, cool. That's what we came up with. Yeah. And you are a little bit different from the rest, aren't you? Um, and I just, I brought this with me because honestly, I couldn't remember it. The menu is a collaboration of global comfort fusion flavor combinations. <gasps> What's that mean? Well, <laughs> pretty much if you look at any dish on my menu or some of the dishes, um, you might see three different uh, like cult ethnic backgrounds of mm -hmm. food in there. Okay. Different techniques all fused together to make one new dish. And pretty much that's it from pretty much anything. It could be like Australian and Japanese or that's you know, great. French American. So out of the box is the story, isn't it? Yeah. At Arantz. Yep. Yeah. And you have lots of different foods. It, the one thing I noticed when I was there, the exotic game meats and those types of things. Tell our viewers what they might expect to see on the menu. Um, we have uh, kangaroo on the menu often, uh, <laughs> yak. Um, I was actually one of the first chefs in this country to import camel meat in over oh the summer. Gosh. Um, I was the first chef uh, to import Vietnam python actually into the country at all. Uh -huh. And um, we've, we've got all types of exotic fish, Kona capache, uh, skate wing, um, pretty much anything that I could get, you know, I've served. All right. So for the brave at heart, move into a Ronce, right? Yep. For, for a meal at a Ronce. And then he, he also has um, regular items on the menu, yeah, too. And vegan food, too. Right, there you go. Okay, we'll be back right after this. Hello, I'm Erica, a culinary student here at Luzerne County Community College with your culinary tip of the day. Today we're going to be making fresh whipped cream. This is something I learned here at the Culinary Institute. It's really easy and delicious. So what you're going to do is you're going to take two cups of heavy cream in your stainless steel mixer with a wire whip attachment. If you don't have a standing mixer, you could use um, just a bowl and a whisk or a hand mixer or whatever is easier for you. And you're going to cook this, do this on medium speed until it starts to form your soft peaks. Once it starts to form soft peaks, we're going to add three tablespoons of powdered sugar. And one teaspoon of vanilla extra. And then you're going to beat that until it gets a stiff peak. Okay, and we're right there now. And you can tell that it's a stiff peak. And when you take it off, the peaks stand up straight like that. They don't fall over. Cream all over. Okay. I want to try and move this out of here a little bit. All right. And what we're going to do is we're going to make a strawberry shortcake for you. We have some pound cake and some fresh strawberries. A dollop of fresh whipped cream. And then your two mint leaves. And that's your culinary tip of the day. Bon appétit. Thanks for staying with us. I'm Kathy Coslett, and this is Chef Dave Simonelli from Arantz in Dorier, and he is making a fruity pork and toast. How'd you come up with that name? Well, um... I created the dish, and then I was like, all right, I need to name it, which usually happens. Sometimes I name stuff, then create stuff. But uh, yeah, I just wanted to simplify the name and then get people intrigued to look into it uh -huh. more. And that's pretty much it. 
because um, we got the different fruity pebbles and a couple of fruity things going on here, <laughs> raisin bread, and then we got the pork, which is the smoked pork chops. I know, I can't wait to see this. So I figured that was the most simplified way to say it. <laughs> I appreciate that, thank You're you. You're welcome. So what's our first step? Get your bread out, cut your yeah, bread. Yeah, and you can use any bread from your local bakery. Um, I have my own recipe, which mm. you'll see on their website. It's actually a, a, like a raisin fig bread. Oh, that sounds um, great. The best, if you do this the night before, you're gonna make your, maybe uh, wanna make breakfast the next day. Uh, best thing to do is let it air out, uh, dry out a little bit, okay. so it could absorb the custard a lot better. All right, and um, you're cutting those really thick, so yeah, people thick need slabs, to know that, right? Yep, like about an eh, inch or so, mm -hmm. you know, and then if you don't have time to let it sit out or you just mm -hmm. forgot, you got home late from work or something and just slipped your mind, that's fine too, it'll still work, but it's just the extra little tips that make it just that little extra okay. better. So at least cut it first and let it sit for the few yeah, minutes that it's taking you to do anything else. Yeah, maybe a half hour, else. hour, that's fine, okay. you know. And You don't use those when you do this because yeah, of that bag? Yeah, we could use these too, you know. If at the restaurant, you know, we'd probably use it all, so. Okay. And, uh, you know, if you're only doing it for like two people, you might only want to do the centers or something okay. like that. You know, everybody has their own preference. Some people might only want the ends. <laughs> all right, Pebbles, how do you figure that one out? You said you um, came up with the recipe. Yeah, we do a lot of cereal things at the restaurant. We make Why? a lot of, even a lot of cakes. Like we have an Applejack cake. Uh, we have uh, all types of stuff with Captain Crown. All different, anything hmm. from like, you know, 80s child nostalgia type stuff. Oh, we work really into neat. all different types of recipes. I bet people get a kick out of that too. Yeah, they love it a lot, you know, mm -hmm. and it's something different, you know, and it's stuff you could get at the store and do yourself, mm -hmm. you know. All right, so let's see what's, what's going to happen over here. Okay, first we'll take, um, we got our pretzels here. You, just, you know, put some weight, crush it down like this first. And then once you get it so far, you can roll it. You do this when you had a bad day at work. Yeah, any pretzel will work, you know. <laughs> I like something with a little salt on it, you know, a little buttery type uh, flavor to it even. Is that why you like using the cereals and those types of things? It's not just like that 80s nostalgia thing. It's yeah. crunchy, it's and sweet. It, and a lot it's... of them have their own flavor and stuff, yeah. you know, and you can pick it out in, tight, in certain desserts and stuff, like, you'll, you know. And uh, that's it. So you crush it up, and when you're done, you should have something like that. Okay. Um, same same with thing the with the fruity pebbles. You know, you could use this, or actually any cereal will work. You know, some people don't like fruity pebbles. You know, you could go the peanut buttery <laughs> route. You could keep it a simple cornflake. Um, whatever. You know, I haven't found a cereal that hasn't worked good, and these seem to crush up pretty easy. So. Do you in general do you like cereal? Like, are you uh, a cereal eater? I use it a lot, but I don't eat it with milk no? in a bowl. You know? Okay. <laughs> This right here was a whole bag of pretzels. Is it use, really? I would use like half of it. Yeah, you'd be okay. some, it crushes down. It doesn't look like you get a lot, huh? No, it doesn't. <laughs> Same thing as the whole bag of fruity pebbles. I'm just gonna use about half of it. So I'm that gonna... was the whole box of fruity pebbles? Yes, it was. It wasn't the family size, just wow. the regular one. Wow, hear that? Oh, not the family size, the regular <laughs> of fruity pebbles. So then um, I got eh, maybe about a quarter cup or so of dried parsley. It has a little different flavor to it. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, it kind of adds a little savoriness to it and a nice little color. Now, are you going to need these again? Um, I'm going to need that for some garnish at the okay. end. But that's about it. Okay. And that we won't need. And then uh, this is a Moroccan spice. I actually make this out uh, Arantz. And uh -huh. this is something that you probably wouldn't find in a store. But if you take like uh, like a Cajun spice mm -hmm. and maybe add some like uh, sugar, brown sugar, white sugar, a little cinnamon to it, that's probably the closest you're going to get okay. to it. Or you could come see me and we could probably there work something out. There you go. Sounds like a plan. About, about a quarter cup of that. This is like, you I know. I love you guys. Spicy oh, sweet. about a quarter cup of that. Yeah, you know. <laughs> as long as you're like within a certain uh, medium. Then you just mix that up a little okay. bit. You know, get a, you know, until you see it's like uniform color. There's no like, uh, you know. It's kind of funny. It smells like breakfast, but then I yeah. smell kind of that Moroccan yeah. spice kind of thing yeah. going on. There's so. a lot of stuff. This, uh, this year. Um, we'll play right across your whole palate, you know, like the only thing that's in here is probably not a sour element and that's really it. Well, that's okay. Sweet, salty, you know. Uh -huh. So then you got it looking nice, you know, <laughs> put it right in your little thing here, have it set aside, ready to roll. All right. Um, meanwhile, you could probably, could probably start the, the maple glaze for the end. Mm -hmm. I'm going to keep that at a real simmer because we're really not going to cook now, anything. Well, that's what I was just going to say. You said this really isn't cooking. You just want to keep it warm. Yes. So when you get to the end, you're ready to go. Yeah, we're just fusing the maple syrup. Um, I got some in there already. Um, just use like a, I use the whole bottle of like organic maple syrup. It's about 12 ounces or uh -huh. so. Just pour that right in there. You um, want to take it? I got some peach nectar. Mm. Um, you can find us at your grocery shelves and like the, you know, like the ethnic aisles and stuff like that. Okay. Um, now it's, okay. 
And uh, basically I used the whole can, which is, I'm not really sure the ounce on it. I forgot to look. Are they smaller though? Yeah, it's like the size of a soda can, okay. almost the same exact size. Um, this is another one you can alter, you know, you don't like peach, you could add apricot, they, they sell pear, okay. um, orange juice even, um, you know, or you can just keep it plain. So the maple. orange juice would be okay because the nectar seems a little more thick. Yeah, is it? yeah. Um, the, the orange juice, you know, basically you just want to infuse the maple syrup. So if it's okay. a little thicker, lighter, I don't think it's going to really matter too much. Um, when you heat it up and warm, it's going to thin out a little bit anyways. Mm -hmm. um, and then I use, have a little agave nectar. Um, so why do you use agave? Um, it has a, a little different, unique flavor. Um, it's organic. It's a little more natural. Can I taste it? Yeah, okay. a lot of people put it in their, like even their teas and stuff. It's oh, a good it's honey really good. substitute, you yeah, know. Um, you can use honey also. Mm -hmm. You know, some people don't care for the agave flavor. They rather have honey. Either oh, one that's works. That's really neat. That's really different. It's good. Yeah. And that's really it. So basically, you know, we'll just keep an eye on that as time goes on. Make All sure right. it's not getting too hot. And that's it. We're going to make the custard that the toast is going to go in. I okay. got about three eggs. So how did you decide to come up with pork and toast? Uh, like what inspired that? I'm not really sure, actually. I just have epiphanies <laughs> of food, and then I make them happen. Um, I just wanted to, uh, you know, do something a little different. I figured not many people do breakfast stuff on the show, okay. so you know, no, typically with breakfast idea. you got, you know, a bread and a pork, and then I was mm -hmm. like, you know, and then of course I always do a different bread and a different pork. pork and, so there you go. You know, so that's how we came up with that. And we eat breakfast for dinner at my house a lot, so we're really in business. But just whisk, whisk up the eggs a little bit, you know, break up all that stuff. A cup and a half of milk. Add that in there. All right. Then we got some rum chata liquor, which is like a oh. coconutty vanilla type yeah. thing. Um, Let me smell. This is an optional thing. Um, oh, that's interesting. You, you don't really have to have this in here. If you can get it, you get it at your local liquor mm -hmm. store, or you could add whatever is your favorite. Maybe a, you know, like a like I guess another coconut rum or frangelica mm -hmm. or okay. anything like that will also work. You know, just to give it a little something, you know, layered flavor. I like building a lot of flavor, flavors in my food, you know, and kind of balance them out. What's that in there? This right here, I got a little condensed milk, just in case it wasn't rich enough. Ooh, there you go. <laughs> and I got about two tablespoons in there. Okay. Um, you can use a bean if you want. Um, for this, I just use like a, like a, just a regular liquid vanilla. Okay. So now some people I know, like when they make French toast and stuff, they actually soak the bread overnight. Do you have to do that? Um, if you do, I'd probably suggest to have like a really dense bread. Like I think what? sometimes it could soak up too yeah. much, you know. Um, I, you know, like if I was taking my time doing this and um, I would maybe even go like five minutes on each side. But okay. you have to keep an eye on your bread because sometimes it absorbs it, it fast and sometimes it doesn't. Oh, get too mushy? Yes. All right. So our next step is actually going to be to... Put the bread in, in the, the liquid, yep, in right, the custard. In the custard. So I think while we do that, why don't we take a break? And when we come back, we'll be ready to put this on the stove. Okay? We'll see you in just a minute. Okay. Let's lay those in there like so. Okay. And let them soak. Okay. for a college that's right for you? Luzerne County Community College has more than 100 majors to choose from, convenient class times, and many online courses. Transfer your degree and continue your education at a four-year college. Work with modern equipment found in the professional world, all at the area's lowest tuition. Make it happen at Luzerne County Community College.
there. We are back and we are making fruity pork and toast with Chef Dave Simonelli from Arant's restaurant in Dorier. And when we left you, um, Chef Dave was putting the bread in the custard mixture that he made to make this toast. And really in just a couple minutes, five minutes, he turned it once, it's really absorbed everything. Yep. Turned right into a sponge. <laughs> Usually it doesn't absorb this much, but it must have knew there was yeah. that rum chata in there. There you and go. It just sucked it right up. <laughs> <laughs> give me some, give me some. So Dave said about, Chef Dave said about two and a half minutes on each side and you're pretty good. Yeah, two and a half, three minutes. You go by eye, you know, you see it's soaked okay. up, it's done. All right, next step is into the fruity pebbles, right? Yep. So we have a fruity pebbles, bread, and Moroccan spices mixture going on yep. over here. Fruity pebbles, some this pretzels. Is... You can tell it's like it has a lot of custard in there. Yeah. You know, you want to give it a firm press with the back of your tongues. Okay. And then. You know, and now you're gonna move that right over to the skillet. Yeah. Do you have to, what gonna, do you put on that? I have this on like a medium high heat. Okay. Um, I'm gonna take a little, a little bit of butter in there, coat it real nice, you know. Then I noticed as I was transferring uh, the bread here, we're going to probably need a spatula to pick it up because it's pretty heavy okay. and it soaked a lot of this custard up. We'll get one ready to roll. All right, and so that was on medium? Yeah, medium, like a yeah, medium high okay. heat. Let's lay that in there. Get our second piece. Lay this that looks in there. good too. Minus the rum if you have the kids sleep over. Yeah, you know. <laughs> They'd be pretty excited about this. Just give them a little extra vanilla. You could even add like different extracts into the custard, like banana extract or okay. something like that to go with like whatever cereal. You know, mm -hmm. they make extracts for anything nowadays. Okay. So now we're just going to get a little color on it. All right, so the first that you're, what kinds of um, menu items will you have when you open for lunch? Um, Lunch, uh, it's gonna be a pretty extensive menu. Uh -huh. um, we got a lot of gourmet sandwiches. I got like um, a lot of different burgers and stuff. Okay. We got uh, a yakalope burger on. It's gonna be made out of yak meat and antelope. What's um, a, I know, don't tell me chicken, but what's yak taste like? Yak, um, it's more on like the beefier side. Okay. Um, it has like its own flavor, but nothing wild or gamey. You know, very okay. uh, comparable to like a, like a beef. But, uh, is that kind of the first thing that people are concerned about when they're trying different meats? Is it going to taste gamey, whatever yeah. that is? Um, I always tell people, um, you know, kind of be a little more open mind when you go to a restaurant because they are getting mm -hmm. like uh, things that have been domesticated okay. or farm raised uh, for the most part. I got some wild things on my menu, but um, you know, like even like like certain venisons and stuff. They used to like their grandfather's venison, and then maybe uh -huh. they, they go for the you know to deal with the big racks, which means it's going to have a tougher meat and okay. more gaminess to it because it's been around a lot longer. Where farm raised stuff is usually mm -hmm. you know harvested at one and a half to two years old, so basically you're eating like the veal of the deer for the most part. Okay. Yeah. Turn now, what about yeah. um, you mentioned before? You have vegan items and gluten free yep. items and stuff yes, on your menu. Yes, we, uh, we cater to all type of dietary needs, or you uh -huh. know, if somebody is vegan, or you know, pretty much anything under the sun. Okay. Uh, we got pretzel tofu squares, which we marinate mm -hmm. in like uh, like an almond milk, and then we press them in like a pretzel, uh, you know, like a panko kind of mixture. Mm -hmm. You know, um, we also do like uh, different types of tacos, or roasted portobello mushroom cap. Okay. We do like uh, the. I got the way my dinner uh, section set up is different preparations, and we could adopt a, like a giant portobello mushroom to any of those preparations oh, also. Oh, that's great. All right, so the next step for this is it's going to go on the oven, correct? Yes. For about how long? Um, I would say about five minutes. I got it okay. heated at about 375. Um, right. I'm going to trans transfer go this to the cookie sheet. Mm -hmm. um, any size will do, depending on how many French toast you're doing. Mm -hmm. You're cooking They're for the whole huge. family. Or you're they just... are absolutely huge. Yeah. You're going, oh, it's nothing, that's nothing. Okay, we're putting this in the oven. When we come back, believe it or not, we're gonna finish this up with the pork chop, so don't go away.
life better by degrees. Choose from over 100 academic and career programs at the area's lowest tuition. Achieve your career goals and reach your fullest potential at Luzerne County Community College. Are you looking for a college that's right for you? Luzerne County Community College has more than 100 majors to choose from, convenient class times, and many online courses. Transfer your degree and continue your education at a four-year college. Work with modern equipment found in the professional world, all at the area's lowest tuition. Make it happen at Luzerne County Community College. back and we are into the pork chop section of our fruity pork and toast. These are different than a regular pork chop. Yeah, they've actually been smoked. It's a whole pork loin, bone mm -hmm. in, already cooked through. So basically what we're going to do is season it up and I'm going to do like a kind of a blackening technique to it a little bit. And so you don't have to worry about cooking this yeah, because no it's already over. smoked. Yeah, pretty much like, uh, you know, like two or three minutes on each side and it's heated through and it's ready to roll. All right. Let's see. So we're going to take more of our Moroccan spice because <laughs> this stuff has a lot of sugars and things in it. Give it and a he little. He made this himself if you're just yeah. tuning in. So I have a spice arsenal at my restaurant. <laughs> That's why I use everything. Every dish I have, I have like tons of different spices, mm -hmm. but they're all balanced well. You know, I did a lot of uh, like studying and uh, mm -hmm. experiments and stuff, trial and error. And I've had probably about nine or ten signature spice blends I use at the restaurant. Oh my gosh. Want to get a nice coating on it like that. Mm -hmm. um, we'll take um, a little We're more. Back to that butter. Yeah, a little butter, Why not? oil. That one there looks Too like. high. Yeah, yeah. everybody talks yeah. about how high yeah. these, um, this stove really is. They love it. Yeah, it's a good oven. Mine here, mine had have to be at four, full bore for a while <laughs> before it got this <laughs> high. <laughs> Uh, might have to invite me back more often just so I could use this as a good stove. <laughs> Somebody else just had said, yeah, I want to take this back to the restaurant with me. So we'll take that, shake the excess off so you don't have like too much burning. Starts right. uh, bubbling and popping. Oh, yep, that's our French that's toast it. going. I'll turn toast this off is ready so to come out of the oven. See, just like you at home. The timer goes off and out it comes. Handy tongs, grab it. Make clear it. some room on the counter here. Okay. And there you go, you got a nice little, it's all baked, yeah, nice cooker. that looks custard. great. So we'll check on our pork chop, just to make okay. sure we're at the right temp here. That looks like it got another minute or two. Okay, so mm. we're going to do another one? Yeah, you can do like one at a time. Basically, once they come into the pan, you put it right on the plate and, you know. So this is really quick. You weren't kidding. Yeah. But this part of it's really fast. Yeah, as long as you're set up ahead of time, you get all your stuff pre-measured, you get your, uh, everything pre-cut. You know, like I said, you could even go a little step further. You have your French toast sitting out overnight. You can have okay. your pork chops cut sitting in the fridge. Mm -hmm. um, you can use regular pork chops too. They don't have to be smoked. So, you know, you can do your pork chops, do the upbreading process, you okay. know, cook them off and then keep them overnight and then just reheat them the next day, okay. put them on the French toast and all that. That getting set up is really, really important, isn't it? We talk th about oh, that yeah. a lot here on Cooking Classic, but it really makes a difference, especially when you have as many yeah. ingredients as you had today. And it makes cooking right? less stress-free too, you mm -hmm. know, especially if you're not doing it for a living and you're right. a little bit of a novice, it takes a little more effort. Mm -hmm. And you know, the better you're set up, the more enjoy enjoyable it'll be, you know? So okay. some people steer away from cooking because it's a lot of work or whatever, right. but if you're set up, it's not. Okay. So we got a little color on it. I'm gonna turn up the heat a little bit, actually. Okay. And uh, you know, I can move it around. You can use a regular pan. I use the Teflon pan. Just uh, you know. so the pan really doesn't matter. A lot of people they have their favorite pan, yeah, and they'll you know. say, "Oh, well, this one gets hotter than that one." Do some pans get hotter than others? Does it matter? Um, yeah. Um, if they're a little thicker, they'll maintain temperature more. Okay. So like, you might have to turn it down after a while. If they're thinner, you, you could probably keep it up all the way mm -hmm. and always constantly try and absorb that heat. Um, if it depends what kind of metal it's made out mm -hmm. of too sometimes. But your average pan, you know, I would say like a medium high heat's good for this, you know. Okay. And just pay attention. It feels, seems like it's bubbling out a little wild or you hear a lot of crazy okay. sizzling. You know, you do a quick check. Yeah, because you don't. If it's dark, it's getting dark too fast. Yeah, there you go. That you know? looks nice. Oops, sorry. Didn't That's mean to all right. And then you're good. If you know if it doesn't yeah. seem like it's up, you can turn. You know, you kind of have to always be adjusting things. Mm -hmm. You know. 
Because you know. All right. So is this one finished? Do you think? Um. Yeah. I'm gonna say it's about done. Okay. We'll pick it up and transfer it to our plate over here. Take a little Moroccan spice or salt and pepper. Oh, we'll all right. Put that in there. I'm gonna put this over here because by the time we get the French toast over mm -hmm. there, we're gonna be good. So we'll take our French toast. This is some breakfast. I don't know. Yeah. Breakfast, lunch, French, or dinner. Lunch. We have it here. I had a lot of. Oh, look at that! You did put it right on top. I've been telling people about this dish that we're doing, and a lot of people are asking me to put it on my night menu. You know, because <laughs> you'd be surprised how many people eat. Uh, you know, eat it for uh, you know, lunch or dinner. Well, I would think. I now, would think. We'll take our. Sir, actually, we'll take that. Hey, right, why side. don't you go over again what you put in here? Just because now, this is the, we did this way back when. No problem. This is the maple syrup, agave, and peach nectar. Mm -hmm. And like I say, you can mix it up with any uh, combinations of fruity flavors you want. Mm -hmm. um, we just brought it up to a heat. You know, just bring it up to so it's just warm, basically. Uh -huh. Everything's fused together. You can reduce it a little bit if you want, you know. I just keep it kind of loose, you know. I'm just going to scoop some out. I'm going to glaze it right over our dish. Oh, my goodness. Look at that. You know. And then you put it, like, if you get a dish with a little well in it, kind of hold it in because you don't want to, you know, oh, spew it all over your nice. counter. So this is your reward, everyone, after you lose that 10 pounds you were talking about. Yeah, you know, you about. eat this and then you go on a diet again for another month. <laughs> there you go. Um, it's a treat. That that looks like it's just about yeah. ready to take out, too. Yeah, you can even add hey, a... You're pretty good at this. You can add a couple of elements you to this. you have your own restaurant going on? Yeah. So, and we'll put the egg Very on top. Very nice. Look at that. I like the sunny side up. Some people might like o over easy, over whatever. Over easy. And then we put a... Clean the rim up nice here. Little garnish. Yeah, I want a little more fruity pebbles Look on there. That. Just in That's case, beautiful. Just in case the dish wasn't fruity enough, you know. It's a celebration. <laughs> yeah. Look at it. It's great. Clean the rim. I like my rim's clean, just like uh, some of the other chefs that have been on the show. And in this area, you know, you can just put like wow. just across the sides or can't get it too much of that. That's and amazing. Look at that. Voila. There you go. This is beautiful. Chef Dave Simonelli from Arantz Restaurant in Durier. Thank you so much. This is incredible. Mm -hmm.